shock of horror on my head. brown up here. Oh, the A E I O U A E I O U A E I O U. Those are my preparations backstage for the How Do You Paint show, which is now starting for real. Welcome to How Do You Paint with me, your host, S. Kate White. Wow, I just drank a cup of coffee. Oops, I wasn't supposed to drink coffee. Oops, I just drank one. Just for the show, though. I'm not. I'm not falling back into a daily coffee habit. Let me. Let me actually get get back in a more real space. Okay. Um, how do you painters? Do you realize this? The painting is is coming to an end, and that means this season of how do you paint is coming to an end. I don't know, do you feel the sadness that I do? It's almost like I don't want to finish it because then it'll end something. Actually, you know what? Let me put all that on hold and just get to painting. I know you guys just want to see me paint. So I'll just paint. Oh, one other thing. Stripey is his name. Stripey, of course. Oh, I didn't, as you probably noticed, I did a bunch behind your back. Don't worry, I'll let you have a glimpse. Roll the tape. All right, feeling like I need to cover up these hills and start over, get some light color in there, and just redo from the beginning. Uh, so just adding some gold, get some gold back in them thar hills. And wiping it out. Also deciding this hill is too round, too cartoony and round. So flattening it out on top, making it more of a slope than a dorky cartoon hill. Just kind of riffing, adding paint, hoping to find something that I like just through spontaneous gestural mark making, going with the gut, the intuition. Not really, not really digging it yet, but it's something, something to at least evaluate. Uh, trying the conifers again. They're fun to do, you know, it's fun to paint a conifer. And then deciding those are too cramped there. Get rid of them. Add some more conifers. Then I'm thinking, oh, let me get some perspectives. You know, little trees in the background, little tiny trees up on the ridge. Getting bigger as they come forward. Kind of laying out the size of them with these trunks dotting the hill. And then thinking, you know what? These ones up here are going to have to be even bigger. Yep, so I just add a few branches on them. Like they're, extend their branches a little bit. Oh, now I'm got all messed up. Guess what? Gold. Gold mine. There's a gold mine up there. Uh, and, oh man. Excuse me. Phone rang. Okay. And now I'm uh, doing some more little trunk stumps on the back. Okay, now here I was thinking, oh, in the, in, the, in the gully, it's wet there. Let me put some greenery, like willow branches, you know? And then, oh, here, let me show it up close so I can show you show you how I'm putting sticks and branches in. There's a lot of branches down there in those willows. I didn't like that. That looks stupid. Get rid of that. And I love trying to recreate how it was before I put in the stupid willows and their dumb branches. And uh, blending a little more. Let me just try these kind of random cactusy looking things. And it's right about now when I realize I have my phone tipped the wrong way. I did it the wrong way. So that's what went down. One thing though that I need to do, which I don't know if you agree, but I think this blue sky is too saturated blue. It needs to be toned down because it's so bright and colorful up here. It's taking away from the, the main scene. Look at my rag. I'm gonna redo the sky, okay? I fortunately have my colors pre-mixed. Um, and I'm gonna tone it way, way down. Oops, I forgot something, everybody. Um, I need to put the yellow in on the horizon, like I had planned. Oh, I did the hunter, sort of. He needs a little more on him, but whatever. Looks like a Muppet. 
you can't see. Oh, I didn't do the thing. <laughs> take, take two. I need my glasses. Okay. I needed to get some yellow in here because I don't know. I want it to look like light on the horizon. I didn't like a lot of these things that were happening that I put here, like this stupid thing. I don't like it. Oh boy. There's a lot to, to be done here. Um, uh, uh, I have to cover these things. So, you know what? I'm just gonna let it be really kind of I'm not gonna try to blend in stuff. I'm just gonna, where I have to cover something, I'm just gonna cover it with white. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to match, you know? I'm just gonna work with. God, I feel so stupid right now. Like, I don't have my, this coffee did not actually sharpen me. I feel like it made me stupid. I want to make my painting decisions based on basic problem solving. Like there's something in the way, cover it with paint. You don't have to match it to, to pretend like it was never there. Just let it be a mistake covered up and let the cover up itself be an element in the painting. That's how you live a life of no regrets. I feel like I had so much to tell you all and I can't think of any of it right now. What's wrong, what's wrong with me? I'm so disappointed in myself. I'm failing. <laughs> you know that feeling when you have an idea, like you have all the stuff you want to say and then it comes time, it comes time to say it and it's not there. It's because you're not in the flow of life. You're in your head thinking you have the answer. Well, it's all fine and good until a confrontation with reality happens. Okay, yes, this is this 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 removal from the flow of life because you have an idea. This is what I alluded to in the last episode when I said narrative painting may be I may be moving past it because It's an idea that um, exists outside of the present moment. So I read this book called Solitude, A Return to the Self. I read this when I moved out to the country. But um, part of what I was taught, what it was talking about was how there's a pattern in artists where there's kind of two different kinds of artists. There's the storytellers and then the pattern finders or makers. And I've always been a storyteller, right? And often I might just be making this up. I read it somewhere else, but so, so don't quote me on this, but um, in later life, in like an artist's second wind in their, you know, second half of life, they are more into pattern and consciousness than story. And I feel that may be happening. Um, for the aforementioned reasons of feeling that story Representing, illustrating a story as in a narrative painting um, is not connected to the present moment, which is kind of what's the realest thing there is. Well, it's where I want to be anyway. <laughs> 
I talk about this like I may not be into narrative anymore. <laughs> like it's just some easy switch change. No, 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 no. This last two years, really. Fuck, I just... Covering up too much of the dark. There's been a real death of my old way, my old self. It's been dying slowly for a while. And uh, part of that is the loss of energy for telling stories and doing the kind of painting I've been doing for like 10 years. And, uh, you know that big gap in, in the How Do You Paint shows? If you're just, if you're watching all the episodes in a row right now on a, on a, on a How Do You Paint binge, then you don't know this, but there was like a pretty giant gap between episodes where I was going along and then they started being more sparse and then it's like, where did the show go? Well, I was having a crisis. Um, majorly fucking depressed. Because I just felt everything that I knew about myself was drying up. Couldn't paint. Didn't know what I cared about. I, I mean, I, you know, I'm a person that cared. It cares about shit when I care about shit. And I don't I care about nothing. I was just to say that when Armageddon comes, maybe I've already said this in the show, in, in the show but... I, I, I'm ready for it because everything feels like it feels like Armageddon's always happening for me. And why? Because of the fucking Armageddon in my family history of the loss of the mother. I mean, that's a kind of psychic Armageddon. Oh, I got a list. I did the highlights on branches. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to cross it off. Highlights on branches. Mmm. Dopamine hit. Uh, did it. That, see, that's a good dopamine hit. I don't like these these things, whatever these are, these 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 vegetative items. So I have to get rid of them. And that means retracing my steps, as in put down red, and I'll have to come back with little green blades of grass. It's a little dark, isn't it? But hey, I can lighten it up. Again, all of these mistakes, cover ups, add to the texture of life. Your fuck ups are texture, aren't they? What else can you do with them? You can't ever go back. I liked what it was like before. It's gone now. It was nice and ghostly before. All right. I'm, I'm having like real like road rage on my painting right now. And um, it's, it's the coffee. You know, everything I was saying about there's no regrets because your mistakes just add texture. Sometimes there are mistakes that are just too bad you did that. <laughs> there's things that are just unredeemable. It's just too bad you fucked up and lost the thing you wanted and had that was good. Too bad you lost the thing you wanted and had that was good. That's painting. Painting's a cruel master, isn't it? What I was talking about was it's too colorful up in here in this area. And all I keep doing is adding more color. That's my problem. I'm at odds with myself right now. Why am I so at odds with myself? Is it just the coffee? Stripey, help me. I'm having a 
a really hard time. How do you painters? I don't know what's happening to me right now, but it's okay. I'm just gonna feel the things I'm feeling, which are feelings of incompetency and um, nothing's working right. And it's my fault. Shame! Shame! <laughs> <laughs> trying to recreate that white supremacy color now can I do it in a spontaneous way like I did the first time eh, 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 eh. Eh. it's a little dark but and it's gonna dry darker you know acrylic dries darker son of a cocksucker <laughs> oh excuse me my dad, whenever he'd get mad when he was younger, he mellowed out when he got older. He wouldn't get mad at me, um, but just get mad at like a ladder. Got mad at a ladder caught up in the in the in the cherry tree. I remember, and his 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 string was goddamn motherfucking cocksucker son of a bitch. Apologize to the people with sensitive ears out there. Actually, I don't know. It looks okay. These colors are kind of working. I'm still waiting for the yellow to dry to bring the blue back down. However, I it's too yellow. It's too yellow. It's too yellow. Sorry, people. I'll never drink coffee again before the show. I'm real. I'm really sorry. This is happening. I just. Just, it, it's too yellow. I have to make it look a little more misty with some white. Should have just done this before I did the blob, but hey, today's not my day. Yeah, and see this, 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 these two colors are a little too close together. So it's good to lighten up the yellow behind. Okay. All right, that is now the right mix, I think, of yellowish and mistiness. The feeling I'm having is that there's some other, there's some other layer of feeling or thought in me that I don't have access to, but it's kind of taking up space in my consciousness so I don't have full access to the channel. There's something blocking, but I, I can't see it. Okay, so I'm going to see on this sketch, I really, I mean, this is just a minor little thing, but it's a nice detail, right? The inside of the branch um, stick broken off. So I was gonna, I, I had done this before, but I'm redoing it. Like, I'm not sure how it works. Like the outer ring and then what? Does it go just, does it just go up? Like that? <laughs> I'm not good at knowing how things look in, in life. I observe, I you know, I observe people more than I observe like how shit works like this. This is probably not right. Don't assume it's wrong, Kate. It might be good. <laughs> is that how it works? See, my dad would know this. He observes things like this. How things look. How they grow. Hey! It kind of works, doesn't it? I think I need another dark in here. It's kind of barking it up a little, huh? Barking up the right tree. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, you know, I'm in a shame spiral. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> 
I'm, that's what's happening. I'm in a fucking shame spiral right now. Everything I do looks terrible to me right now. This is not, a, not the space you want to be in when you paint. We need to stand back and look at the painting in an objective way out of the shame spiral and just see what we're, what's here. I don't know. It'll, it'll come up. I'll bring it together. I'll bring it, I'll bring it home people. I'll bring it home in the next couple of episodes. We'll see where this, we'll see where this ends up. All right. Thanks for being with me on this. I don't know. What should we call this? Shame spiral episode of how do you paint? Mm. Shame spiral is such a cliche term. I can't even believe I'm using it. You should become an internet person. Ugh. I got nothing. All right. Um, I just thought of something. I was thinking I should have a little animal on the log watching because because this this thing points off in that direction, a very strong exit the painting direction. And so it would be good down here to have a little animal with his eyes looking into the painting, plus diagonal, diagonal, hunter shooting, these guys going this way. We just need an animal looking in that painting. And I was thinking, what if I put a zebra? Would that be too weird? I mean, we would know why there's a zebra in there. Other people wouldn't, but would it matter? You know, imagine just stripey, like right there on the log. I mean, I could just glue him to the log, but he's, you know, that would be the end of his life. So I won't do that. Um, but I could paint a zebra on the log. Anyway, just a thought. Okay, see you next time on How Do You Paint with me, your host delicious Kate White. <laughs>